Hey, welcome back. It's so nice to see your faces. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a little lesser known feature known as the movie render queue. And this has finally been made production ready as of 4.26. So it's a pretty new thing. Um, just to make things clear, the movie render queue is not here to replace the sequencer. The two work together. So think of the movie render queue as a DLC or a supplement or an add-on to sequencer. Now, some of the notable perks of using the movie render queue include um, much more streamlined UI way more rendering features, and much higher quality renders if you so desire. This video is split up into two parts. The first part, I'm going to be comparing both default settings in both Sequencer and the Movie Render Queue, just to show you guys that, hey, the renders are actually the same if you so want them to be. In part two, I'll be showing you guys how to take things one step further and getting some of the cleanest, best possible renders I've ever seen come out of Unreal. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, hey guys, let's get started in Unreal. The first thing we want to do is we need to enable two plugins. Um, I believe in 4.26 they're enabled by default, but let's just go ahead and enable them anyway. Um, so we're going to go to the settings tab up on the top here, click on plugins, and you want to type in the search bar up here, movie render queue. And two plugins will show up. Make sure both are enabled. You'll have to restart the engine as always. It doesn't take very long. This is normal. Now, uh, you're going to want to enable additional render passes as well because this enables crypto mat or object id and if you don't know what that is i've made a video about it right here so without further ado once you've restarted the engine let's get started so once you've enabled those two plugins the first the next thing we need to do is we need to set up a sequencer now this tutorial is not going to be about sequencer if you don't know what it is or if you don't know how to set it up there's lots of documentation about this so i'm going to go ahead and assume that you know what sequencer is and how it works um, so sequencer and the movie render queue kind of work in tandem. One does not replace the other. So we need to go to the cinematics tab up here and I've already made a sequence. All right. So I set up a very quick camera here. Uh, not even any animation. We've got a lovely environment here that I cannot take credit for. This is taken from the Megascans Goddess Temple. Now this is free. It's a free pack on the Epic Marketplace. Um, the link is in the description below if you want to go ahead and find it for yourself. It is a gorgeous looking scene. All I did was I deleted a bunch of stuff and I had changed the lighting a bit. So I you know, got a, wanted a more sunset feeling. Um, but the lighting is really the only thing that I did in this environment. So the first part of this video is I'm going to render both a, a shot from Sequencer and a shot from the movie Render Queue. And we're going to look at these two still images in Photoshop and we'll be able to compare results. And you're going to see with the default movie Render Queue settings, the results are exactly the same or almost. We're going to go ahead and hit the render this video button in the render movie settings. I just chose my output path. I'm going to be rendering PNGs and I'm just going to hit capture movie. So once you've got your sequence set up, you got your camera established, you know, you got your framing, right? We're going to go ahead and look at the movie render queue for the first time. So where do you find that? You find it up here in the windows tab, click on window, Go to cinematic movie render queue click on that and your window will pop up so this is not a brand new thing this came out in 4.25 but epic believe that it is now production ready as of 4.26 so what we're going to do is we're going to hit plus the plus render button right here click on that and add the sequence that we just created now you're going to have your job settings and output so don't worry about this just click on unsaved config right here you're going to get another window that shows up. Okay. So I'm going to, so you got, this is a pretty straightforward tool. I really like it. It's clean. It's concise. It's, so I, you got output rendering and settings. I'm going to go ahead and click this and I'm going to delete the JPEG sequence because I don't want to render in JPEG. So I'm going to go in setting and when you click on setting up here, you have a ton of options show up. So you got the, the anti-aliasing stuff, console variables and output. You can choose the output stuff, file that you want and the rendering mode that you want. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add PNG sequence eight bit, because that's what my sequence would rendered in deferred rendering. You can kind of leave that as is output. Now, one thing that I really want to look at here is the anti-aliasing setting. Now this, this setting right here is a game changer by default. If you just leave it at default settings, it's going to, you can see right here, anti-aliasing method, none is grayed out. If you override it, you can change it. For now, I'm going to leave it off. So I'm going to not override anti-aliasing. 
by default, the movie render queue uses the anti-aliasing method that your project is using. So sequence, so what you're getting sequence is what you're going to get in the movie render queue if you leave this off. So for now, I recommend leaving this off. And because we want to get the same render from sequencer and movie render queue, right? So with that done, choose the output path, make sure everything's okay, hit accept, render local. And a new movie new uh, window will pop up. And there we go, it's rendered. So now let's jump into Photoshop. Okay, so I've, op I've opened up the render here, um, two still images. So this one, this is the image from Sequencer, and this is the image from Render Queue. As you can see, there are some subtle differences, but for the most part, it is the exact same render. Okay, so the differences that you see are mostly noise related. You know, if I zoom in and, you know, toggle this layer on and off, there's some, you know, minor differences, but for the most part, it is negligible. Like, if I didn't know any better, I wouldn't even know that there's a difference. So by not touching any of the AA settings, the anti-aliasing settings in the movie render queue, you're going to get the same result as you did in sequencer. So that's kind of a safe thing. That's really good to know because I don't want it to be different, right? Not yet. So that's how you render it, you know, normally. So guys, you don't need to take my word for it. I've included all the renders that I'm going to be making throughout this video down in the description below. So you can go ahead and download them and see for yourself, see what suits you best. So why would we even use the movie render queue when, by default, the results with, compared to Sequencer are going to be almost the same? We're going to be looking at four things that make the movie render queue a complete game changer. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, it just would kind of goes without saying, and that's the cleanliness of the UI. Everything is kind of found in one place. You want to add a setting, you want to add a render path, you want to add another file format, everything is accessible right here. So for example, if you want to render out both EXR, and a JPEG sequence, well, now you can. Um, so you can add, render multiple file formats at once. In Sequencer, you could not. Um, you could also add multiple render passes. You have full control over this. You have full control over a bunch of things. This is one of the things that makes the movie render queue just a little bit more appealing than the Sequencer. So another cool feature that was included in the release is the addition of the high resolution setting. So what the high resolution tab is going to do is it's essentially going to as you can see here in the Unreal documentation, is it's going to render four different tiles, and this allows you to get four times the resolution of whatever. So if you render, you know, each tile is 4K, then that means you're going to get a massive file. Now the downside of this is you're you're not going to it's not doesn't support any of the screen space stuff. So you know, like reflections, convolution, bloom, lens flare, motion blur, that sort of thing is not going to render correctly. Um, so use this with caution. Now, we're going to go ahead and add anti-aliasing, and this is where things get really interesting. This is what makes the movie render queue such a big deal. Right now, in order to increase the quality of your renders, now the render allows you to get some subsampling, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to override anti-aliasing. We're going to change the anti-aliasing to none, all right? Don't panic. It's fine. Your renders are not going to have no anti-aliasing because we're going to increase the temper the sample count all right so we're going to go ahead and set this to 64 which means it's going to have 64 sub samples between the frames and it's going to give you an extremely clean render so the next thing you want to do is we're going to go ahead and go to setting here and add console variables now according to the unreal documentation which the link of which will be included in the description below just so you know so it tells us right here in the documentation that Unreal Engine makes ray tracing possible through the use of denoising techniques that do rely on temporal history. When using high resolution tiling and disabling temporal anti-aliasing, you may need to adjust the following console variables for better results. And they're talking about the four console variables down here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy those into our movie render queue. So you go to make sure you have the setting console variable in your list here. And in console variables, you're going to want to click on little plus. The first one up here on the top, click on the plus, and you're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and paste the console variable from the list. Okay, so if we've got it right here, all right, we're going to copy paste this. Now, be sure that you don't copy paste everything with the zero. Okay, make sure you only copy the text because the actual number 
is included here. So this is zero. If I want it to be on, it's set it to one, but we're going to have it zero. So a mistake I made yesterday was I copied all of it, the whole thing with a zero, and my render didn't work. I was wondering why. It said the console variable doesn't exist, blah, blah, blah. So just make sure that you only copy the text and paste it into your thing. All right, now add another one. I'm going to go copy this again. Get this one. Add another. Refraction denoiser, reflection denoiser. Put that there. And the shadow denoiser. One more. Okay. So now that these console variables are done, we can go back to the anti-aliasing tab. Just make sure that, you know, 64 samples. You can hit accept. Once that's done, you're just going to go to the output tab. Make sure that your output directory uh, is okay. <clears throat> so once you've selected your output folder, you are ready to render. So hit accept. So before rendering, I've actually gone ahead and I made a little animation for my camera over nine frames. Okay. So just to kind of give you guys an idea. I got my camera here and over nine frames, it's going to move like this. I'm going to go ahead and turn pretty much turn off all motion, um, all depth of field because I want the, everything that's blurred to be motion blur only. And you're going to see why in just a second. All right. So I'm going to set this to like F 16 right here, um, to just basically eliminate all depth of field. <clears throat> so the only blur that we're going to get is going to be motion blur. Okay. Now going back to the movie render queue. Now that we're ready, just going to go make sure everything's okay. Yeah, everything's there, except, and now you're just ready to hit render local. The window's going to pop up again. So as you can see, it's going real slow and you can see the subsample count here going up. So from zero to 64 and it's going to pop going up. And it's going to pop. So uh, what it's doing right now, just to kind of explain what's happening, is the amount of sample you get is the amount of subsampling that's going to happen. So this is going to give you a much cleaner render. Um, your motion blur samples are going to be much better. Um, there's going to be less, much less noise in your image as well. It is much longer to render. That is a given. But what you're about to see soon when we compare the render from this and in sequencer is your images are going to be much much cleaner this way. So the longer render times, in my opinion, are absolutely worth it. So now that this is done, I'm going to go ahead and render the same shot with sequencer. Okay. So we're going to be able to compare the animated frames from sequencer and the movie render queue. So I've made sure you know, my output directory is okay. New folder, PNG, 1080p. You can go ahead and click capture movie, save selected. Now, obviously, Sequencer is much faster at rendering it, right? It, it gets its real time, or almost. So, once the images are rendered, we're going to go right back into Photoshop, and we're going to compare those two renders between the movie render queue, with no anti-aliasing and a bunch of subsamples, versus Sequencer, which is a much faster renderer, but you'll see why I'm, I prefer to use the movie render queue from now on. So right here is we've got the Sequencer render. Now, as you can see here, you know, there's a bunch of noisy samples. The motion blur is not great. It's not very, uh, it, it doesn't look very good. But next, this is the movie render queue result. Now, going from A to B, you can see that the movie render queue results are substantially better. It's been, like, just look at the noise samples here, right? On this urn. This is sequencer. This is the movie render queue. The motion blur itself alone, like look on the side here, it's much softer, much creamier. Um, the biggest shock to me was in the plant, right? Like look at the noise on the plants here, right? It is just absolutely a noisy mess. But here with the movie render queue, everything is clear. It is very clean, okay? Same with the motion blur. Let's look at the out of focus elements here in the motion blur, right? Look at these uh, temporal AA artifacts that you've got in the ferns up here. But when I turn on movie render queue, it is a proper 
motion blur. I mean, if I didn't know any better, I would think that's a ray traced. Um, so there you have it. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, just look at this right here. Um, just everything about the movie render queue renders are so much better. Okay, now I, I know I'm at 300% here, but just look at this noise. Look at all these artifacts here. And then in this render, it's nice and clean. So I understand this might be hard to see in the video. If you don't believe me, see for yourself. I've included this PSD in the description below. Download that file and see for yourself just the wild, massive difference in quality between the two renderers. Once you see for yourself, you're never going to be going back to Sequencer ever again, because this is just, this to me is a game changer. This changes absolutely everything. So after seeing this, I am, chances are I'm not going to be using Sequencer ever again, just because the difference in quality for me is absolutely worth the extra waiting time. Um, that being said, Sequencer still has some uses here because if you need some fast renders and you iterate quickly, Sequencer is the way to go because it is that much faster. But if you can afford to wait a little bit, I'm not going to be using Sequencer much anymore. So once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It makes a world of difference for small channels like mine. And I'll see you guys in the next video.